I mentioned in chapter one that evolution is not scientific because it's not observable, not repeatable, not verifiable, not subject to experimentation. I also mentioned that the theory of evolution contradicts some known scientific laws. The law that I'm going to be talking about now that evolution contradicts is the law of biogenesis. Now what is the law of biogenesis? The law of biogenesis is that life can only come from other life. Evolutionists propose that in distance past, small inorganic molecules, lifeless molecules, formed into amino acids, which formed into proteins, which eventually formed into living cells. Now this idea that life came spontaneously from non-life is called spontaneous generation. This has never been observed, never been repeated, never been verified, so thus it is not scientific. There are two cases of non-living things coming to life. One is Pinocchio, the other is Frosty the Snowman. Most scientists do not believe this to be true, it's just a fairy tale. Of course, evolution also is a fairy tale. So there really is no documented evidence or ever has it been observed of non-living things creating life. Now how close have scientists come to creating life? When you read some papers about cloning, you read about stem cell research and so forth, that make you think that they are close to creating life. They are not close at all. It's like me having three or four bricks, telling somebody, here are three or four bricks, I have almost completed a skyscraper. Well, two or three bricks is not even close to a skyscraper. What they've been able to produce, such as amino acids, are not anywhere near close to creating a complicated living cell. Even if scientists could produce life or synthesize life, I really question that they ever will, but even if they could, it would not be non-living matter spontaneously generating life. It would be a purposely done experiment. What are some problems encountered in synthesizing life? When chemists do synthesize amino acids, and I'd have to have a, a model to show this, there are what are called right-handed and left-handed amino acids. And what is produced by scientists is a 50-50 mixture. 50% right-handed, 50% left-handed. To do with the rotation of polarized light through a chemical, that's part of the way they get this name left-handed and right-handed, the way the light is rotated. All living proteins are formed only from the L or the left-handed amino acids. In fact, if you have any right-handed amino acid whatsoever, it's going to actually cause the living cell to die. The simplest living cell is far more complicated than any amino acid or any machine ever invented by man. Is life just chemistry? Well, life is chemistry. Life contains chemicals. Life contains atoms. Life contains molecules. But life is more than just chemistry. There is something, for example, when a person dies, the chemicals are still there, but life isn't there. So life is definitely more than chemistry. There was an experiment performed years ago to, to disprove this idea of spontaneous generation. Francisco Reddy got three flasks. I doubt whether they were Erlenmeyer flasks, but this is, illustrates the example. When he lived, they thought that meat spontaneously generated maggots because often on meat exposed to the atmosphere and out in the air, maggots, which were kind of like little worms, developed on the meat. So they thought it spontaneously occurred. So what he did was he put meat in three different flasks. One of the flasks he left open to the air. 
The other flask, he put a porous cloth on top, like a cheesecloth. And the third flask, he completely sealed over. What was observed after a period of time was that flies came in and laid eggs on the meat. Flies also came, couldn't get at the meat here, but laid their eggs on the porous cloth. And the third class, flies didn't even know there was any meat in here, so they didn't lay any eggs. After a period of time, yes, maggots developed on the meat. In this case, though, no maggots developed in the meat because the flies couldn't get at it. But the eggs and the maggots started hatching here on the porous cloth. And the third class were no maggots, no eggs, nothing. And of course, the meat was as it was originally. Francisco Reddy destroyed this concept of spontaneous generation on a macroscopic level. But some people still believe that spontaneous generation occurred on a microscopic level. Until Louis Pasteur, who was best known perhaps for pasteurization of milk, did an experiment. And his experiment was different than Reddy's. His experiment was on a nutrient broth, sterilized this broth, but he put it into several different containers. The first container was left open to the atmosphere. The second container, though, had this tube that was bent, so that dust could not get into it. Even though it was open as far as it wasn't sealed off, but still dust couldn't get into it. What he found out that in this broth, this one that was open, it became cloudy as bacteria, which was carried there by the airborne dust particles, caused this broth to become cloudy and it was no longer sterile. But this one that was open with a tube that was bent, even though it was not closed as far as pressure is concerned, dust couldn't get in there and this nutrient broth remained with no microorganisms in it. So Pasteur's experiment dealt a death blow to the theory of spontaneous generation. There are other ideas for how life was supposed to originate on the earth. One idea is that life must have originated somewhere in space and then was sent to earth by some advanced extraterrestrial civilization. This is popular, of course, with the ET fans. But this does not answer the question of the origin of life. What it would do is if it was so, it would only transfer the origin of life to some other planet. But of course, the real problem is, is how could life have survived the severe conditions of space travel? This is just science fiction at its best. It's certainly not scientific. And we're also going to show later in the book how that life has not been found any place in the universe except here on Earth.